What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today we are in Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm here to talk about the murder of Fawn Cox, a crime that went unsolved for over 30 years until recently when advancements in DNA technology finally pointed the finger at her killer. We're gonna go back to July 21st, 1989, summertime in Kansas City, Missouri, hot and humid. 16-year-old Fawn Cox worked at an amusement park in the area called Worlds of Fun. And at the time, she also was a full-time student at Northeast High School. So, on the night of July 21st, 1989, Fawn Cox had worked all day at the amusement park. And I imagine when she got off of work at 11 p.m. at night, being outside in the humid heat, she was tired. So she goes home, her family's there, she says hello to everybody, and she is tired, she is beat. So she goes upstairs, turns on the AC, and goes right to sleep. The next day, her alarm is going on. Now, her mother, normally, when Fawn's alarm goes off, you know, she would either hit the snooze button and sleep for another 10 minutes and get up and get about her day or what have you. But on this particular day, that alarm kept going on and on and on and on. So Fawn's little sister, Felicia, goes upstairs to see, like, why is her, why is she not shutting off her alarm? She opens the door and she sees Fawn sprawled out on the bed. She shakes her. She says, hey, Fawn, wake up. Your alarm. Wake up. Fawn ain't moving. She says, get up, and she starts shaking her a little bit harder. She's just not moving. Immediately, her sister yells for her mom to come upstairs that Fawn's not moving. The mother goes upstairs, checks on her daughter, starts shaking her. Fawn, get up. Nothing. Immediately, they both start screaming, and they call 911. When 911 arrives at the scene, they rush upstairs to try to revive her but it's already too late. Uh, Fawn was cold to the touch and she had been dead practically the entire night. Tragically, now we have a crime scene on our hands. So Kansas City homicide detectives come to the scene. They start dusting for fingerprints, uh, start looking around. Now, curious enough, at the time that the murder occurred, the whole entire family was home and when they took her body for autopsy, it was determined that she was raped and strangled to death. The first question that's on a detective's mind is, if the entire family is home on the night that their sister, their daughter was murdered, nobody heard her screaming? Nobody heard anything? Well, like I said earlier at the start of the video, July 21st, summertime in Kansas City, Missouri, it's hot. And a lot of these homes uh, in this neighborhood, a lot of these homes, they're older, so they don't have central AC. So you're going to have pretty much every single room in this area has their own air conditioner. And of course, when you turn on that AC and it gets loud, you're not going to hear anything. So whoever broke into her home and murdered her knew her, they knew who their target was, and they knew exactly what room to go to and that uh, this uh, murder has been or had been unsolved for over 30 years the house at 4640 east 9th street is no longer standing uh, it got knocked down quite some time ago so this empty lot right across the street where you see that hammock in the tree that would have been where the murder scene where the murder took place and I remember when I was uh, back in 2015, when I came out to Kansas City looking for a job, I remember seeing Fawn's face and her name on a billboard right off of I-70. And their family had raised money for a reward. And this, this murder for over 30 years was unsolved. Now. At the time, the family was begging for Kansas City Police Department to do some kind of uh, 
the DNA testing because there was DNA left at the scene. There was no fingerprints, but there was DNA. Now, for some unknown reason, the uh, police department's excuse was that it was too expensive to do any kind of uh, DNA uh, genealogy testing. And for years and years and years, this murder just remained unsolved. For the next 30 years, the Cox family would go throughout life wondering whatever happened to Fawn, whatever happened to their loved one, who was responsible for her murder. Everywhere, the mother or father, the sister, the family member, everywhere they would go, they would probably think, if they're at a store, is he the one that's responsible for her murder? Did he do it? Can you imagine living your life like that? Everywhere you go, you're like, I, I wonder, is, is he within a, a, a mile radius of me? Does he live in my neighborhood? And for years and years, this thought would go through their mind. And uh, finally, in 2020, the family would get uh, some kind of closure and uh, they would find out uh, who was responsible for her murder. And when they got the results back, uh, they were absolutely shocked at who was responsible for this poor girl's murder. And the man responsible was none other than her own cousin, Donald Cox Jr. He raped and killed his own cousin and there would be no justice served because uh, Donald Cox Jr. Uh, died in 2006. Uh, from what the police report says, uh, they consider it foul play. That's all I can say about it, so not sure. But it appears maybe hopefully somebody did him in. Maybe they suspected that he did it. The family had some inkling. You know, they kind of felt uneasy because this dude was a real piece of filth and he was a, a longtime drug addict and uh, really a, a, a violent jerk. But, I mean, it was probably just one of those weird suspicions, but they didn't really have uh, uh, an idea with him. I don't know. I'm just talking. You know, I probably, I, I, I mean, I'm sure I would have heard about this case if it wasn't for that billboard that I seen. But uh, when I seen that billboard, man, I, I never forgot this story. Even when I wasn't doing YouTube, I, I, I read about the story. I looked, uh, I Googled the story and I, I always wondered if it would ever be solved. And thank God it was. Beloved daughter. Rest in peace. Terrible. Okay, guys. Lamont at large, I am out of here. I will see you on the next video. Be good. Peace out.